or welcome English-speaking people to Arnaud Lefebvre's gallery in Paris. Uh, today is the closing day of our tribute show to feminist uh, art critic Aline Dallier, uh, who passed away in 2020 at the age of 92. Uh, so um, we decided to, um, to honor Aline Dallier um, by bringing together the works of nearly 30 artists about whom she wrote or with whom she was friends. Um, so Aline Dallier was the first person in France to write a doctoral thesis about women's art and she chose to specialize um, uh, on women's te textile art. Um, she especially supported women who um, who tried to um, uh, revalorize, that's not an English word, um, <laughs> who, um, who tried to use traditional textile uh, techniques and their experience uh, as homemakers um, to, um, to, to make works of art. So there are a certain number of works in this show which make use of sewing, knitting, or other textile techniques. Um, but not only. Uh, so Aline Dadier was also um, a strong supporter of, the, of diversity in contemporary art. So there's also painting, drawing, uh, photography, film performance. Um, so I'll present some, some works. Um, so there's several works in the show which deal with uh, women's experience of motherhood. Uh, so, right here, there's a piece by Lillian Camier um, in the 1970s. She was a young mother with two small kids at home. And she was busy making uh, smocks um, and t-shirts and other uh, accessories for her kids. And so she decided, well, how can I integrate uh, these practices into my own artwork? So she made a series of works in which she sewed plastic pockets onto canvas. Um, and she filled the, the pockets with um, remnants from her daily life, uh, such as um, fragments of hair, photographs, toys, sand, to also show the, um, her, the passing of time and her, her fragmented time as a mother. So she would try to work in between uh, taking care of her children. And next to this piece, there's a drawing of hers. Um, once she had completed her series of uh, textile pieces, she did return to drawing. And she began drawing, um, drawing textile or textile fibers and the process of sewing, which, is also, which could also be seen as a kind of writing or as um, a kind of meditative process. Um, so next to Lillian Camier, there's also, there's work by Claude bourré allard so um, the two pastel drawings. Um, so Claude uh, is perhaps more of a traditional artist, but in the uh, mid and late 1970s, she did a lot of drawings of the body. Um, technique is very important to her. Um, her use of pastel um, uh, shows the sensuality and the, the softness of the skin. Um, her husband was also a well-known photographer who in the 1970s made a series of photographic portraits of nude pregnant women that were used in advertising and that created a scandal. So Claude also made drawings of uh, the pregnant body and so showing a very pregnant woman was something that still isn't something that's um, frequently done. So um, these two drawings of hers uh, are really part of, um, uh, in the 1970s, women women drawing or representing the female body um, their own way, according to how they see it, how they live it, and experience it. Um, and so likewise, up on the top, there's a drawing by Monique Friedman, um, who began her art artistic practice in the, in the mid-70s by making drawings of the body. 
Um, so her drawings are, they're like a, um, they have an expressionistic feel. They could call forth um, Egon Schiele, for instance. Um, so these drawings that Monique did, uh, they were, they were a way for her to really to begin or re-begin her artistic practice. She had been to art school in the, in the late 60s, um, just before uh, the events around May 1968, and then the whole questioning of, well, uh, the artist's role in society and what painting is supposed to be and supposed to represent. So for a few years, she stopped artistic practice and did other things, and then when she got back into making her artwork, she began just by simply drawing the body. So this is one of those drawings, and in fact, these drawings from the mid-70s, um, many of them have never been shown, and she, she took this drawing out and had it framed uh, specifically for this show. And so after this series of uh, drawings of the body, she moved towards uh, abstraction. Um, so continuing with um, women's experience and how they represent their experience in their, in their artwork, um, this large painting by Danielle Blanchemont, um, uh, it's called um, The Birthing Sheet, I guess that's how I would translate it in English. Uh, so for Danielle Blanchemont, it's always been very important to um, well, sheets have, and textile have always been very important. Um, so uh, the way uh, the artist explains it, when she was growing up, her mother was, uh, was sick for a, a long time. And so there were always these rituals around uh, bed sheets. Uh, the bed, bed sheets had a, a huge importance because the, her mother's sheets had to be washed and changed every day. So it was um, the women's work to wash, iron, um, fold, put away, <laughs> uh, change the beds. Um, so the, the, the sheets have quite a symbolic charge for Danielle, especially because, well, you're, we are born into sheets, we, are, we live our life in between sheets, we, and then we, when we die, we're wrapped up in a sheet. Um, so in this painting, uh, uh, Danielle is expressing the, oh, oh, <laughs> she's expressing the, um, perhaps the ambivalence um, of the experience of motherhood and also um, Yes, so in this painting, uh, Danielle is, um, she's exploring what for her was the ambivalence uh, of, of motherhood, and there, there is the presence of the baby. Um, Danielle explains that the, the baby, the baby here, the baby isn't really represented as a um, flesh and blood human being, but it's the, the imprint uh, that the baby has left on the birthing sheet. So the baby is both there and not there at the same time. So it's also a way of, of expressing how the, the sheet, the sheet um, keeps the, the imprint of our, of our presence, even once we're no longer there. And what's also interesting about this painting is the fact that the, the sheet becomes the canvas and the, the canvas becomes the, the sheet. So there's this ambiguity between the real object and the painting itself. Um, another thing that I should probably mention is that there are several works in this show that were only exhibited in the 1970s and then put away and are being re-exhibited here for the first time. So Claude Borealard's pastel drawings were shown in 1978 and not since. Lillian Camier's textile piece was also shown in 1976 and not since. It was actually uh, shown in a, uh, an exhibit of textile work that Anne Dallier put together, and afterwards it was returned to um, Lillian Camier's studio and uh, hasn't been out since. So now it's being seen anew, which is uh, a good thing. 
and uh, Monique Friedman's drawing has also has never been shown. Uh, and Danielle Blancheland's painting dates from 1977 to 1978 and hasn't been exhibited that much either. Um, so moving along, um, the piece up here is by Thérèse Anc Jonas. Um, so um, it's also a piece from the, the late 70s. So at this time, Therese, she was also a young mother with two kids and she didn't have much time to work. Um, so she, what she did at this time uh, was to collect um, these, uh, these cardboard, these pieces of cardboard at the market um, on which uh, they, were, they were pieces of cardboard on which there would be buttons. So when you would go buy go to a shop which, uh, which sells uh, all the materials that you need for sewing, you could buy these, these cards which, which had the buttons on them. So, um, so the artist collected all of these cards, which obviously no longer have the buttons, but there are still the, the pieces of thread in there on which the buttons were attached. And so she, in her spare time, she would paint on the buttons, uh, on, on the cards, so the artist explains that she, she, loves the gest she loves the gesture of painting, the act of painting. She says she doesn't paint very well. Um, but uh, the, this work here could perhaps be seen as a kind of diary or as a way of writing, of, of recording the time. Um, each card could be seen as a moment when she was in her studio, focused on, on herself, on her work, and um, affirming her, her presence as an artist. And so over time, she accumulated several of these painted uh, pieces of cardboard. She painted on them both on both the front and the back, and then she assembled them to make larger paintings. So they could be read as, um, as a, a, a kind of message, a statement of the artist and mother who's, um, who is uh, affirming her, her her artistic vocation. Um, so next to Thérèse Ambjonas is a piece by um, François Janico. Um, so François Janico in the 1970s made a whole series of drawings, uh, rubbings actually, and drawings of the, uh, of the floor of her studio. Uh, so um, a theme that was central to all of uh, Francoise's work was um, uh, the feeling of being closed up. And so by making a whole series of drawings of her studio floor and then hanging them up on the wall, it was as if her studio was engulfing her. So it was a, an expression of her feeling of, um, of being closed up and unseen and unheard uh, as a woman artist. Of course, this work and Therese on Jonas's piece as well, um, these pieces also express uh, links to um, materiological painting and drawings bourgeois that was uh, um, going on at the time. Uh, in Paris, there is a, it's, it's linked to conceptual practice, minimalist practice, um, and the, the, the reduced color, the use of white, gray, ochre, all of that was part of also what was being explored by many other artists at the time, men as well as women. Um, so also on this same, uh, this same wall are two pieces by uh, Bernadette Bourg, uh, the yellow piece here and the uh, smaller brownish piece underneath. Uh, both of these works are done on paper, paint on paper, and then reworked with thread. So the artist so the artist is using a, a sewing machine to draw. Um, and in this piece here, she, she pierced the paper with the needle. So it could also be seen as a kind of writing. It could also be seen as an expression of um, 
of anger or determination um, or as a kind of language. Um, and, and the artist, uh, she is also sewn into the, um, into the paper. Um, so Bernadette Bour has explained that um, she, she was also using sewing as a way of um, uh, reclaiming women's domestic practices, but using it in a different way, using it to paint and to draw. And so another artist who, who works that way is uh, Hesse. So this artist here. Um, so Hesse is of Car Caribbean um, descent. Uh, and she lived in New York and then in Paris. Um, and she as well in the 1970s was um, a mother of uh, a few small children. And so she names, she's, she devised a, a, a term for her art, she called it survival art. So she would um, take what was, was handy at home, so kitchen towels, pieces of fabric, uh, thread, needle, uh, and she would uh, create um, paintings uh, or works of art with um, needle and thread or with buttons. Um, so this piece here is embroidered. So it's like a, a honeycomb of, of texture across the, the piece of canvas. It's called the grid. The grid. <clears throat> Yes, perhaps that's some, something else that I, I should mention, given that these works are also linked to minimal, minimalist practice. Um, the grid structure is um, uh, of primary importance to, all, to, to several of these artists. Um, and so down underneath is a series of actually recent works by Vera Molnar, who was a pioneer in the use of um, uh, the computer. Um, so she would make, she would use um, computer algorithms to uh, experiment several different um, compositions, which she would then uh, select and, and then rework by hand. So these pieces are, the, this, this triptych here is more recent, it dates from the 2000s, but it, uh, calls, it refers to a piece that she made in the, in the 1970s. Um, a somewhat different piece is this one by Nil Yalter. Um, so Nil, Nil Yalter is an artist of Turkish origin, and so she's done, she calls herself um, an ethno-critical artist, and she's done a lot of work about um, uh, exploring the uh, living conditions of Kurdish women, um, or women who live, uh, who, who live in the nomadic communities, who live in yurts, uh, so this piece is called um, Sexism in Turkish Cuisine. And um, uh, so there are, these are actual recipes. Um, and so the, the titles of the, the recipes re reveal that sexism inherent in, the, in culture. Um, here the, the priest has fainted, um, the great sheik's fingers, uh, the female's thighs, and the lady's belly button. Uh, here, down underneath, um, two more pieces. So this, this is a work by Françoise Elliot. Um, so Françoise Elliot was initially a, an ethnologist and a um, psychoanalyst. And in the mid to late 70s, she created a she founded a group of women artists, and she began um, uh, a, a graphic uh, practice of her own. So um, this work here is, um, could also be a work that's linked to writing, but there are uh, imprints and um, traces of her fingers dipped in, in gouache on paper. And then down beneath is um, a piece by Colette Dublé, uh, who in the 1970s uh, had a practice of drawing. And she would draw these fairly realistic windows that she would put into boxes. 
So in some ways, uh, her practice could be linked to the work by Francois Janicot, in which she felt closed up and, and, and contained, and she didn't have any breathing space. So in this piece, it's perhaps more a representation of um, uh, frustration or a need to, to, to break out of what she'd been doing previously. So the, there's no drawing, but just shredded up paper stuffed into the box. And that's a, it's a piece that dates from 1976. So, so today, um, we have another piece by Colette Doublé in the show as well. Um, up here, it's a, um, a silhouette of uh, Mary, um, Mary um, Madeleine, um, starting in the late 1990s. Colette Dublay began doing a, a project devoted to represent, representing um, uh, women in art history, or rather she would draw or paint silhouettes of women in art history. So this is a Marie Madeleine from um, a painting by Philippe de Champagne. Um, so the re representing women's reappropriation of uh, the female body and representing the body the way they see it is um, uh, a major theme in feminist art or women's art from the 1970s and up until today. Uh, so next to Colette um, Dublé's piece, there is this... Um, Diptych, these double reciprocal self-portraits by um, a team of two women artists who go by the name of uh, Clonaris and Tomadaki. So it's Maria Clonaris who passed away a few years ago and Maria, um, uh, sorry, Maria Clonaris on the bottom and uh, Katarina Tomadaki on top. Um, so they are experimental filmmakers um, and throughout their practice, which la lasted for several decades, they were just working together. They represent themselves and they represent each other and they focus upon how, it's how women represent their desire for one another in film. How, uh, how women can construct images of their own, their, their own desire. Um, so this, this piece is called, uh, in English it would be, uh, The Child Who Peed Sequins, um, which I'm not really sure if I can explain in English. Um, but the two artists uh, superimpose images of other objects. Um, which su suggest a kind of sensuality or a desire on top of their own image. Um, and they've been, for, for several years, they've worked on cinema and, um, and um, multifaceted um, performances in which there will be film, slide projection, um, maybe voiceover, even the use of uh, aroma. Um, so they they were amongst the first people to really take experiment experimental film out into a, a larger field. So staying within the the theme of the self portrait, uh, next to their work is a piece by Charlotte Kalmis, who was born in Syria in the very early 20th century, and then she came to Paris to do her studies. So in the 1950s, she became relatively well known as an abstract painter and also as a poet. And then in the 1970s, with the uh, feminist movement, uh, she became quite engaged uh, with feminism, and she created a group of women artists uh, and she tried to, to help women get in touch with their creative potential. And also uh, she did some, um, 
some uh, inquiries into, um, statistical inquiries into the number of women who were represented in galleries in Paris. And so this piece of hers is a, uh, it's a, it's a self-portrait. Um, she did a, a series of self-portraits uh, self where she was focused on her, her identity or her, her multiple identities as um, um, a woman of Jewish and Middle Eastern origin. Um, and her, her place in the city or in her city of adoption, which was Paris. And so in, in this particular self-portrait, there are several images of herself plus uh, um, bits of her own uh, typed manuscripts and uh, images of the city of Paris. Um, underneath, uh, still dealing with self-portraiture portraiture, to some extent, uh, is a work by Dorothy Seltz. Um, so in this piece, um, Dorothy Seltz reactivated a work from the early 1970s for this show. Uh, so here, uh, Dorothy Seltz took an image of a pinup uh, and then an image of then she photographed herself in the position of the pinup and she painted um, panther spots on her body. And then she framed these two images uh, in what looks like uh, cake frosting. So these two pieces are a diptych from 1974. Uh, and then just last year, she uh, photographed herself again in the same uh, pose, so as a much older woman and she's holding the diptych from the 1970s. So it's, um, it's a play upon um, uh, image of women, woman in uh, advertising, uh, and um, woman as being uh, an object of consumption. Um, continue. Uh, <coughs> Still uh, dealing with uh, the woman's body. These are two photographs. These two photographs represent a, a performance by Orlan from 1974. So the, the work is called Mesurage. So it's uh, angry, angry measuring. <laughs> uh, so Orlan is using her own body as a, as a unit of measure to, to measure uh, the Vatican and the and the St. Peter's uh, Basilica. And this, is, uh, this work about measuring has been, um, um, Orlon has continued doing this work up, up until today, actually. And uh, in, starting in the, 19, um, in the 1970s, many women artists began, in different ways, using their bodies as a, as a way of measuring urban spaces or interior spaces. Uh, normally in, in this show there is um, a video that's projected by um, another artist, Esther Ferrer, but um, it's been taken down for the moment because we'll be showing uh, other films later this evening. Um, Esther Ferrer um, measured her own body and then used her body to measure an interior space. And she also made this photograph, a uh, rayogram, mm -hmm. up on the the top in red, where her, her hands frame her eyes, and the, the hand gesture that she's making uh, represents a woman's sex, and it's the gesture that women would make when they were demonstrating for abortion rights in the 1970s. Um, so not every single work in this show uh, deals with feminist content per se. <clears throat> Next to Esther Ferrer's uh, piece is a photograph by Sarah Holt, uh, an American artist who's been living in Paris since the late 1960s. Uh, Sarah Holt began her career as a sculptor, working with transparent resins to explore light and color and the uh, toxicity of those materials uh, led her to abandon them and then she shifted to photography. So for this piece, which is titled Why, um, she 
was out on a boat at night and she left the, um, it's a very long exposure, she left the aperture open for a long time while the boat was rocking and so the camera captured um, the light from the moon and uh, happened to write the word Y in the sky. So Sarah Holt made several uh, photographs, uh, a whole series with small words and the alphabet um, all based on all the result of how the camera captured light. Um, another artist whose work isn't overtly feminist is um, this piece by Aline Gagnier, who's also a much older, a much older artist as well compared to many of the other artists in this show. Um, she was close to the surrealists in the late 30s, 40s, perhaps early 1950s. Um, she, her, her artistic practice experiments all kinds of different uh, processes and techniques. Um, for this series, or for this particular work, which is called Solitude, um, she was trying to capture what she considered to be what's essential in uh, the human being with just uh, um, a diagonal line with, with, with the intersection of um, the intersection of diagonal or vertical and horizontal lines. Um, next to her piece is a work by or two drawings by Cristina Martinez, um, who since the early 1970s has been working with drawing, and in the 1970s experimented with uh, the use of line and trying to um, trying to capture capture atmosphere light um, just through the the use of of line overlaid line mark making uh, mostly in colored pencil um, these drawings here are done in ink um, and they they call forth actually the process of, of weaving she's exploring um, the, the, an interweaving of um, so in this drawing she is still exploring uh, light but also um, the process of of weaving um, and the interlocking of, of um, of lines which which can suggest a, a textile process actually and so there is an interesting link with the work that's underneath this is uh, two pieces by Marie Rose Lorté um, so Marie Rose Lorté is a, really a textile artist who does weaving knitting uh, embroidery um, but I would say that she she paints with yarn. Um, her pieces are um, vibrant, abstract compositions. She also makes um, sculptures, um, impressive volumetric forms, which which are which can be called uh, architectures, or they even suggest um, clothing. And uh, next to Marie Rose Lorte is um, a sculpture by Christian de Casteras and Andre Marquet, um, two artists who also did painting and drawing, but who collaborated on several textile pieces, so including this grandmother. So they collected um, used old clothes that had been um, put away in their respective attics and uh, made this grandmother who dates from, uh, who was made in 1976 or 1977, and she's aged quite well. <laughs> and the detail on her face has been, has been stitched. And, 
And here in the window is, um, is another piece by, by Danielle Blancheland. Um, it's actually, it's a, a piece of canvas that has been shaped into the form of a, a cardigan sweater. Uh, Danielle Blancheland actually um, uh, was at uh, Aline Dadier's uh, thesis defense, and she said that Aline was wearing a, a black cardigan sweater and that she was very nervous and constantly tugging on her sleeves and uh, kind of all knotted up with anxiety. So this clothing portrait um, calls forth that, uh, th those emotions uh, that Danielle felt while, um, while watching Aline uh, defend her thesis. And so I should point out that this is um, this, uh, what looks to be a piece of clothing was actually a piece of canvas that has been shaped uh, into a cardigan sweater. It's actually not a piece of clothing. Ah, yeah, Monique qui encore trois. Et puis, Nancy Wilson. An artist who, um, in this work, is not making overtly feminist work. This is Nancy Wilson Padgett, who actually did begin her career making feminist work. Um, uh, Aline Dadier uh, met this artist uh, when her name was Nancy Kitchell. Uh, Nancy Kitchell was one of the founding members of the AIR Gallery in New York City, so the Artist in Residence Gallery that was created to, um, to support and promote uh, the work by women artists. And Nancy Kitchell at that time was, had more of a conceptual practice uh, where she was dealing with her own uh, personal issues and women's issues. That was in 1973, 1974. Um, Aline Dadier even uh, managed to, um, even organized Nancy Kitchell's uh, first exhibit in Paris at the, uh, at the Germain Gallery in 1974. Um, Nancy Kitchell then, um, well she became then Nancy Wilson Padgett, she, uh, she moved to Paris and then later on into the early 1980s she began um, uh, experimenting more with photography and with um, ancient photographic um, uh, processes from, you know, that, that, that call back to the pictorialist uh, uh, tradition in photography from the late 19th century. So that's what these photographs um, uh, are a part of, uh, where the artist is exploring the, the depth and the richness of, of the blacks. They almost look more like drawings than photographs. She's interested in creating a, a mysterious, um, kind of a mysterious atmosphere where we're not really sure what's going on or what we're looking at. Um, so moving on to another artist, up above the door here is a piece by Milvia Maglione. Um, Milvia Maglione is actually especially known for her large textile pieces, for her, for her integration of uh, all sorts of daily household objects and, and sewing and embroidery into her artistic pieces to make big, I guess could, they could be called paintings. Um, this, this piece, however, is from a series of screen prints that she made. And so it's also, um, it also refers to her other uh, activities as um, an illustrator and also a child, childhood imagination. <coughs> okay. okay. And lastly, uh, this painting, here by um, Monique Kisa. Um, <clears throat> is uh, it's called an icon, uh, an icon both uh, referring to uh, the Russian icons, the Madonnas, 
but also the the icons from the first uh, well the first uh, Apple or Macintosh computers, which looked as though they were in 3D. So it's a, a play upon both um, uh, the history of painting, traditional painting techniques, and um, the technological era. Uh -huh. <clears throat> And so here we have a piece by um, Aline Rivière, who uh, throughout her artistic practice has uh, worked with tissue, textile, and with um, clothing, with dresses especially. Um, her interest is in um, uh, enveloping the body. Once again, um, perhaps like Danielle uh, Blancheland's um, practice and her use of sheets. Uh, Aline Rivière is uh, particularly interested in the, the imprint that the body leaves in clothing, and it's and her um, she explores uh, tissue as um, as a as a, as a second skin. So it's the the sensuality and the, the presence of the body that interests her in making these dresses, and in this particular dress. Uh, she's playing upon the notion of the, the intestines as being the, the body's second brain. <clears throat> <clears throat> 